All right, so I'm going to teach you a little bit about the pressure temperature chart and uh, give you some facts about refrigerants. Uh, so what you're looking at here on my screen is actually a pressure temperature chart. Ooh, I'll blow it up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. And basically what it has is a temperature column here and then it has uh, pressure columns for each refrigerant that's on the chart. So just to make it easier, um, what they've done is put multiple refrigerants on here, but each refrigerant can, column can sort of be treated like its own chart with the exception of refrigerants who have... Uh, who exhibit temperature glide as a um, as a zeotropic refrigerant, zeotropic blend. They exhibit, exhibit temperature glide, uh, which means there's a difference between when they start boiling and when they finish boiling or when they start condensing or when they finish condensing. But anyway, most, most refrigerants only exist in a liquid or gas state. That's to say uh, they are fluids. Fluids that exhibit volatility, and that's going to be an important word here, volatility, uh, are apt to change between liquid and gas very readily. Refrigerants are volatile. In order for any volatile fluid to change state, it must absorb or release energy. The energy that refrigerants absorb and release is actually heat energy. And we can actually see this if we were going to boil water on a stove or something like that. Um, in order for refrigerants to be kept as a liquid, they must be stored in a cylinder and they must be stored under pressure. Now they generate their own pressure. Uh, and this is because of refrigerant's low boiling point. At sea level, water boils at 212, where refrigerant R22, for example, does so at negative 40. And we can see this on the chart here if we scroll down uh, and look at R22 here at negative 40 degrees. That's roughly zero PSI atmospheric pressure. Uh, so that's approximately the temperature that it boils at that low. Uh, at altitude, water boils quicker because of uh, lower atmospheric pressure. So if you go up a mountain, the boiling temperature of your water is actually going to be lower. Uh, the same is true for all liquids which can boil, including refrigerants. Increasing pressure on a refrigerant and HVAC system raises its boiling point, while decreasing the pressure on it lowers its boiling point. So if we increase the pressure, we raise the boiling point, decrease the pressure, decrease the boiling point. It's a direct relationship. By modifying the pressures and having a low pressure side of the system and a high pressure side of the system, we can create a system which uses a cycle of compression and expansion to actually force these refrigerants to boil and condense in a controlled condition. Uh, remember that refrigerants absorb and release a lot of heat energy when they boil and condense. Uh, we can cause the refrigerants to boil and condense in coils that have air flowing across them or coils that maybe have food products stored on them or something of that nature. Uh, the boiling actually absorbs the heat from surrounding air or product, uh, which is forced across the coal in an air conditioning system in this case. Uh, the other coal of the system is going to be your condenser coal. And that's uh, where the refrigerant actually condenses under high pressure and releases the heat that the refrigerant uh, has actually absorbed in the evaporator. Now, we go through this uh, compression and expansion phase, and this uh, pressure temperature chart can offer us some insights. So if you don't know how to read it, uh, when I ask you to cross-reference it, what I'm asking you to do is basically find uh, what temperature uh, this refrigerant is saturated at. Now, saturation is boiling or condensing. It means the same thing. So if I wanted just to give you an example here, uh, I would give you, say, uh, let's use R410A here because it's a convenient column. Now, I have a pretty big cursor on the screen. Hopefully, you can see it. Uh, but anyway, R410A at, say, if we stored a cylinder in a controlled environment at 50 degrees, we would expect the pressure in that cylinder to be 143 PSI. <clears throat> now you see what's going on here. Uh, as temperature increases, the pressure within that cylinder will also increase because the refrigerant is actually boiling off to pressurize that cylinder. So you can cross-reference the chart in actually a couple of different ways. You can actually, I can ask you what pressure, uh, say, R123 uh, would boil at 100 degrees. So if you had R20, R123 at 100 degrees, we'd look over on this chart. This is 123 column. Uh, 120 degrees correspond, uh, 100 degrees actually corresponds to a uh, pressure of 6.1 PSI. Now notice this is a low pressure refrigerant that we're working with here. So it actually exists uh, as a liquid at certain temperatures at atmospheric pressure. So that's interesting. That's a different kind of refrigerant. It's a little bit different. Uh, it, you can actually pour it out like water and watch it evaporate. So it's a little different. But uh, that's a low pressure refrigerant example. Uh, either way, learn how to cross-reference the chart. The uh, core practice test number four is going to have some examples in there. And that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.